Hello friends and welcome back to my channel. If you haven't seen my face before, my name is Alexis and welcome to a little weekend reading vlog. So today is currently Friday, August 4th and I have been a little reading machine so far this month. I have already finished two books. Completely unheard of, but since I am going on a little vacation here in a couple weeks, it makes sense that I'm reading more before vacation because I know I will get no reading done during that time. I don't have any plans this weekend, so I figured why not film a little weekend reading vlog to see what bookish shenanigans that I get up to. Right now, I am currently reading Belladonna. This has been Belladonna, Belladonna. This has been on my TBR since the beginning of summer, so I figured I need to read it this month since it's technically the last month of summer. I don't know much about the plot so far and what is going to end up happening. If you're new, I like to go into all my books blind, so I'm very curious to see what is going to happen between death and our main character. Y'all, I am so bad with names. If you were to ask me the other characters' names in this book, I probably couldn't tell you even though I'm currently reading it. I'm a plot girly, what can I say? If you have I haven't seen this edition before it is absolutely beautiful this is the naked hardback on the front it just says it's said that five belladonna berries are all it takes to kill someone here on the back cover is who I'm assuming is Sigma and Death. Later this month, the sequel to this book comes out, Foxglove. I'm not sure what date it comes out on, but I knew I wanted to read this before the publication of the new book. It's one that I will want to pick up just because we're following such a unique premise. Plus this cover of Foxglove is stunning, just like Belladonna here. So without a doubt, I will definitely be picking that book up. So yeah, I hope you guys join me over this weekend reading vlog. I'm really curious to see what I will end up reading and accomplishing this weekend. I do have an audiobook on Libby of One of Us is Back by Karen M. McManus. This is the third book in the One of Us is Lying series. I'm kind of nervous to go into this just because I know it follows so many characters and it has been a couple years since I read the second book in this series so I hope there's a recap or something that will help me out. I have a physical copy of that one headed to me in the mail so I'm sure that will help me if I get it in time before I read the book. For some reason, towards the end of this week, I've been in such a YA young adult mood. It's like all of the books I want to read are young adult, which I'm not arguing with because I will gladly take some time to read some young adult titles that I have on my shelves. The thought of reading another Freedom McFadden on audio popped into my mind, even though I gave two stars to The Inmate. I think it was just something about the short chapters and writing style that wants me to read another one. So yeah, I think I'm going to head into my kitchen now and grab a little snack. This is such a weird combination but I've been craving like a hot chip with cottage cheese. If you have never put like flaming Hot Cheetos or anything in your cottage cheese before, y'all are missing out. You guys need to try it. It is so good. <laughs> also, let me say before I end this clip, I was just watching some of what I just filmed back and it is obvious that I cannot say Belladonna. It is Belladonna. It is not Belladonna and I know I'm going to be saying it wrong for the duration of me reading this book. Belladonna, Belladonna. Y'all know what I'm talking about at least. So please just bear with me. I have never been able to say this word properly. Thank you. <laughs> Can we just take a second for my shelves? It may not look bad, but to me, they desperately need a little loving. But this is the first time I'm properly showing you guys my bookshelves and I figured we just needed to take a minute to appreciate it. This also reminded me that I left my phone and tripod over here. Yippee. Like for example, why is my book of the month books going in reverse rainbow order when I have the reds clearly on this shelf? going to black. That's something that I will need to fix here soon. Dad, look away, you might get grossed out, but I'm about to eat cottage cheese, and I don't know if these are new or they're just new to me, but they're the Ruffles Flamin' Hot Cheddar and Sour Cream. These are fire. If you take anything out of this weekly reading vlog, let it be this little snack. Okay, Dad, I'm done showing cottage cheese. You can you can look back again. So while I was eating that snack, I was also reading Bella Donna. So I feel like I have a better understanding of what's going on. So let me fill you guys in on what is happening in this book. Earlier, I said her name was Sigma, I think. Her name is Signa. Apparently I can't pronounce anything regarding this book, but here we are. So we are following Signa and like starting from when she is a baby to current day, everywhere she goes, somebody dies. Her parents aren't alive anymore. So whatever family member that she has been living with, someone in the family dies. So she's been going about her life. She is an outcast. People think she is cursed. People think she might be a witch even. People just believe she is the one conspiring and all of these deaths 
are related to her because of what happened to her when she was a baby. And she is fascinated by death. In this book, death is like a person. He's he's more of like a shadow, but he reads just like a person that Signa is the only one who can see him. Signa is living with her aunt who treats her terribly. Her aunt believes she's a witch. So one day she calls upon death by eating belladonna berries and accidentally takes her aunt's life. After that, death kind of manipulates a letter that gets sent to her last remaining family members who live on this massive estate. It's like a giant mansion. It's almost giving castle vibes, but they're a very rich family. And because of this letter that death sent, they take Signa in to live with them. So far since being on this massive estate, I'm getting very weird vibes from all of the characters. Death is kind of following Signa around, helping her out and helping her figure out what powers she actually holds. With that plot along with this other one, there is a mystery kind of going on at this estate that Signa is trying to solve. Both of these plots are equally intriguing and I just know I will be reading more tonight. One little thing to note is Death calls Signa his little bird. I don't want to be called a bird, but in this context with these two characters, so freaking cute. Just no one ever please call me a bird. Happy Saturday, quick little update. I am over halfway into Belladonna and I'm hoping to finish it up tonight. But right now, something more exciting is happening. My parents and I are going to this new drive through pretzel place that we just got in town and we are about to stuff our face with pretzels as one rightfully should. So I am very much looking forward to this pretzel experience. I hope they sell like an icy or something just to get like that whole, you know, I'm going to the mall in the 2000s era. That would be amazing. But the fact that this is like a drive through pretzel place, I think it's a pretzel maker, this is going to be great. I'll take you guys with me. Let's go. <laughs> Who are you cheering? Because oh, Alexis is here. <laughs> What'd you order? I ordered the cinnamon and sugar pretzel bites. Thumbs up. They were good. Rated out of five. Uh, four. Why, I don't know. But four. <laughs> What'd you order? The mozzarella pretzel bites combo because it only comes in a combo. With? Eight piece with marinara sauce, pizza sauce. How do you like it? I liked them. I'm glad I tried them. You have to wait four minutes for them to get done, but that's okay because it's a specialty item. But I would get them again and I'd give them a four. I just had the normal salted pretzel bites with cheddar cheese sauce and I'll give it a five out of five. I think mine was the best out of everybody's here. We had a little pretzel trade and we traded our nuggets for different nuggets <laughs> and I liked mine the best. We also randomly decided to get some fused baked potatoes. So, uh, here we are. Pretzel, 10 out of 10. Cheese, baked potato, 10 out of 10. So it is currently like 3.55. I got home with five minutes to spare and I am just now opening up my laptop, the Literally Dead Book Club hosted by Books and Lala, is going live here in five minutes to discuss their July pick because they never had a live show for Riley Sager's selection, which is the only one left. Shoot, what's the name? the only one left. And I am really anxious to see what everyone ends up rating it. I'm very curious because I feel like I was right in the middle for my rating on this book and others completely loved it, others hated it. So I feel like there's gonna be a very wide spread of ratings. For the next hour or so, that's what I'm going to be doing. And I think I'm going to shower, put on some pajamas and dive back into Belladonna.
put a finger down if you just went on like a 45 minute hunt around your house to find a stupid highlighter that was sitting on your nightstand the entire time. Frizzy hair and all, I have just finished reading Belladonna. Was this anything absolutely amazing? Not really. I have some thoughts, so let's get into them really quick. If you've read Kingdom of the Wicked, death as a character is giving very Prince of Wrath vibes. So if you loved that character in Carrie Maniscalco's books, definitely pick up Belladonna. So last night before I went to sleep, I got to like chapter 21, which is just about to the 50% mark. And I texted myself some thoughts just so I wouldn't forget what I was reading. And honestly, I still feel the same way looking back at what I texted myself. So as I was describing this book earlier, we're following two different plot lines. We're following the relationship with Death and Cigna, as well as Cigna trying to solve this mysterious murder that is going on at the state that she just moved in at. The whole mystery plot with Signa was very well developed and I felt attached to those characters more than I did death, which is really weird to say because a lot of people read Belladonna just for the death character, which honestly, I'm probably one of those people who just picked it up because death is an actual character. For the first like 60% of the book, until death and Signa make a deal, we don't spend a lot of time with those two characters together. But it seems like as soon as the deal is made, the relationship instantly begins. And that was just like, it just caught me so off guard based on the surface level information we were getting. I just wanted maybe some more depth with the Death character or Cygna's character. We learn a little bit more about Cygna than we do Death just because she's developing these powers not knowing what to do and it stems from her being a baby. But I want to know why is Death Death? Has he always been Death? What's his fascination with Cygna other than that he's always been entranced by her? Why her? Why'd you pick her? I just wanted more information to make the relationship more believable. But once I hit like the 70, 60% mark, the rest of the story just flew by. As soon as Death and Signa made that deal, that plot helped Signa solve the murders that were going on at the estate. So once those two plot lines intertwined, it made the story just so much more enjoyable to read. Even though I devoured the last like 40% of this, I'm still just left wanting more from the first half. So I think for that reason, I'm going to settle on giving Belladonna a three and a half stars. Not because it's bad or anything, and I definitely would recommend Belladonna, and I'm absolutely going to pick up the sequel, which I learned comes out like September 5th or 8th, sometime around there, not in August. So I was wrong about that, but I will be continuing on with this series because how this story ended, we now have to follow Cigna solving a whole new set of murders. So now that I finished Belladonna, next up I'm going to pick up kind of a wild card, but I've been wanting to read it for a few weeks now. I don't know why, but it's just been one that I don't really know anything about, but I have been thinking about picking up. So since I'm in the mood for it, I might as well give in and I am going to be picking up BK Borison's In the Weeds. So the first book in this series is Love Light Farms and I read that, I wanna say like eight months ago or so, I highlighted that book and that was the first time I've ever highlighted or wrote in any book for that matter. So obviously I have to continue my highlighting spree within this series. So that is why I went on a hunt for a highlighter. I don't have one that matches, nor do I want to use yellow or orange because I feel like it would smear the ink. So pink it is, the color matches the theme. I gave Love Light Farms when I read it like the biggest five stars in the world. So I have been anxiously waiting to pick the second and third one up in this series. And I also found out that this series got picked up by a publisher, which congratulations to be Kay Borison, but RIP to me because I have the first three books in like the self-published versions, which are absolutely beautiful. The pages are so white in them. For this publisher pickup, the covers are for the most part the same, but like the font and just like, you know, overall look of the books are different. When the fourth book releases, I don't know what I'm going to do. I hope she still sells a self-published version just so I can keep the whole series matching. If not, I'm going to be sending an apology letter to my bank account. Y'all know, as a book collector, you just need everything to match. Hello, hello. I feel like this is a perfect time to do a little reading update. It is almost midnight. I have just been lounging in my bed, reading in the weeds, and I keep telling myself one more chapter, one more chapter, one more chapter. Y'all know how that goes and I cannot stop reading. I literally can't. Whatever BK Borison puts into their books, the characters, the small details without making the text too repetitive or too long, just having all of these characters back together again and hanging out on Love Light Farms is perfection. It's all I could have asked for 
in this very moment and I am so glad I decided to pick this up. If I don't stop reading now, I'm about to go into chapter 7 and I think this is when our two characters are going to start communicating about stuff that went down in their past together. So I know if I don't put the book down now, I will want to continue reading for the rest of the night. Hello, happy Sunday friends. It is, it is already 1 p.m. but let me fill y'all in on what I've been doing all morning. When I say all I've been doing is reading, all I've been doing is reading reading and I am loving this book so much. So let me try to describe what In the Weeds is about. In the Weeds is a sweet and second chance romance about truly finding your happiness. Our male main character, his name is Beckett, and he is a grumpy farmer on Love Light Farms, the town that we know and love from the first book. He is head over heels in love with Evelyn St. James, but neither of them have the guts to confess their feelings for each other. Evelyn has picked up her life and traveled back to Love Light Farms and is currently rooming with Beckett in his cabin. Evelyn is the complete opposite of Beckett. She is this happy, sunshine-filled social media influencer who is currently taking a break to find her true happiness. It also has the four cutest kittens, which I never say cats are cute, so since I'm saying cats are cute, they actually really are cute in this book. They are named after four of Santa's reindeer. Beckett found them in book one, if you know, you know, and he's still taking care of them along with possibly a baby duck. I won't spoil too much about that. I'm listening to the audio as well as following along at the same time, and when I have the audiobook of a physical copy that I already own, I tend to just listen to the audio and busy myself while doing something else, but for this book, I have been listening to the audio and following along in here while highlighting some of the funny quotes and I am literally just having the best time so that is going to be what I'm going to continue doing today. I really want to try and finish reading this book. I think I have just around halfway left and I'm sure I'll be able to knock it out. I literally don't have any other plans today except for staying home and reading. It just started raining pretty good here so I know we have a storm rolling in later. It said like my town was going to be on like the outskirts of the severe weather so so I guess we'll have to see if we get hit really bad or not. Either way, I'm loving the dark and gloomy mood just while getting lost in this book. Um, hello. It is several hours later. It is like 6 p.m. now. I could have read this book faster than I did, but I took my time highlighting really just absorbing myself in the world because of how perfect it was. With saying that, obviously, I finished reading In the Weeds by B.K. Borison. I don't know what BK Borison injects into her books, but oh my goodness, just like my experience with Love Light Farms, this was amazing. It's been raining all day, so it was literally the perfect day to just sit and devour this entire 400 page book. I have so many lines highlighted in here. I've never used these highlighters before, but I think they like went viral on TikTok or something. They are just the Pilot Pastel Friction erasable ones. The opposite end of the highlighter has like a little eraser on it and it actually erases really really well and it doesn't like crinkle the pages so I definitely recommend using these. This is the second one I've gone through and I've had the same conclusion that they run out of ink fast so Take that with what you will. Anyways, this entire book, my review will not even do it justice. It was just so perfect. If you want to read this during the time that it takes place in, read it during spring. Each four of her novels that are going to be featured in this little standalone series are going to take place in a separate season. So far we have winter, spring, and then I think the third book is summer, and then publishing soon will be fall. I'm not sure when that one will release, but I'm really looking forward to the fall one since it's my favorite season. Beckett is this grumpy tattooed farmer that lives at Love Light Farms. He is definitely the grumpy of the grumpy sunshine duo, but deep down he is a softy. The duck that he adopts, he named him Otis. Otis the duck, that is so cute. I don't usually connect very well with female characters, but Evelyn was an exception. We got to know a lot about her and kind of went on this journey where she is finding happiness again for herself. She started a social media career back when she was 16, so she was basically thrown into the social 
social media influencer light ever since she was a kid. Now that she's in her adult years, she's finally taking the time to find what truly makes her happy and we uncover what that is throughout this entire book. This entire book was just such a wholesome experience. If you'd like to read a book that you just want to cozy up with on a couch with a blanket wrapped around you, that'll give you the warm fuzzies. Read in the weeds. It's everything you will need and then some. With all of that, you can probably guess it, but I'm giving this book a big five stars. It deserves every single star and every single hyped review that you read on Goodreads for it. Even though the third act conflict falls within the lines of a miscommunication trope, it didn't take away from the story. Both of these characters are really mature and they worked through it together to get a better understanding of not only themselves, but they came out of it understanding each other better. Now I desperately want to read the third book, Mixed Signals, but I think I'm going to save it for myself when I need a little mood boost maybe on a rainy day. So with all of that, I think I'm going to end the vlog here. It's 621, but I know I'm not going to finish another book by the end of the day. I'm pretty sure my next read is going to be One of Us is Back by Karen and McManus. If you'd like to hear my thoughts on this book, go ahead and stay tuned because I'm going to be filming my next week in a weekly reading vlog, if you will. So if you'd like to see whatever reading shenanigans I get up to, stay tuned and be sure to subscribe to my channel. Thank you guys so much for sticking around and hanging out with me this weekend. If you liked this video, drop a thumbs up down below. It helps me out a bunch. And with that, I'll catch y'all later. See ya. Plus this cover of Phlox. Phlox? Try again. Also, please let me say something before I end this clip. Why am I asking you? It's just one of those words that haunts me because I know I will never be able to say it properly no matter how many times I train myself. So like starting from... Hold on. Wait, move ahead. <laughs> And I just had the normal, what are, wait, what are they called? Did you hear that crack? Good lord. I need to sleep on my head so it defrizzes. That's what happens when you take a shower. My hair is gonna be so frizzy in this clip. Comment is my boyfriend. It's popcorn time, baby. Even though the third act conflict is propelled by a miscommunic, even though the third act conflict is because of a miscommunic, even though the third act conflict is because of a miscommunic. What's this button do?